Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to be talking about young people and why they need to be investing right now, guys. If you look at last year, 2022, it was an absolute brutal year when it comes to the stock market, which we're seeing a little bit of a recovery in 2023, but it seems like it is going to be trending that way, kind of leveling off throughout the year. Possibly if the Fed starts reducing a little bit of rates, we're going to see the stock market really grow. And in my opinion, not a financial advisor, it is going to go up and it is going to go up substantially. So we're going to run through a couple of the key points on why now is the perfect time to go ahead and invest. One way to look at this guys is the stocks and bonds are on sale. So as we've seen the big decline or the, the stock market really come down in 2022, it means that everything fundamentally when you look big picture, you're buying at a discounted rate because of how the market has performed before. Again, 23, it's been going up a little bit. Though we feel safer after buying after a long bull run, that isn't the case guys. It is super um, kind of counterintuitive if you wait till the stock market is doing well to go ahead and start buying because possibly you're going to dollar cost, cost average into a much higher position when it comes to stocks specifically versus when you're buying them down. If you're following some of the market, if you're looking at some of the, the trading tips that we've seen, a lot of um, companies will be upgraded, downgraded, different funds, different things to really pay attention to. Some of them will be a buy, a strong buy, a sell, a hold. There's a lot of different terminology that you really do have to learn if you're going to buy and sell. Now with that, I am talking about specifically with, again, stocks and bonds um, and picking specific companies. When you look at ETFs, when you look at a bigger, broader index like the S&P 500, it is really the time, guys, and I have a good portfolio that I'm gonna show you guys um, in another video, but the stocks and bonds are on sale. Second one we look at is learning about the pain of losing money in the stock market. Um, losing money, especially hard-earned money, hurts, and it can be very detrimental. When you lose 5%, 10%, 15%, percent of your portfolio best way to really dip your toe into this investing put a hundred bucks put 500 bucks put a thousand dollars put whatever you can guys to really play around with to get used to it to really see exactly what it is regardless of what system you're using what brokerage you went with how you're buying them if you're using things like robin hood if you're using things like weeble um if you're using m1 finance Depending how you're looking, guys, put a little bit into it. Test it out, move it around, play around, see exactly what it's going to be because the more that you get familiar with it, the more you're going to learn and you're gonna learn those lessons fast and you're not gonna learn those lessons with a lot of money, which is really the big thing, guys. It is the, the earlier you start, you have the ability to really compound interest and you have inertia when you start building up the compounding interest which is the next point that we talk about, guys. The two most powerful forces in the universe, compound interest and inertia. That was Albert Einstein calling the power of compounding the most powerful force in the universe. Um, and I have seen it and I have seen it work in my personal life. Um, the more that you really put into it, just like YouTube, I love doing YouTube videos. This is something that I'm super passionate about. Throw a lot of energy into it and i love being able to provide some guidance with a lot of knowledge throughout my years to really um put you in a better position financially um hopefully budgeting wise but also the investing part so think about it guys with the compounding interest so you put hundred dollars into an account every single month in the course of a year now you're at twelve hundred dollars well now you do that by 10 years now you're at twelve thousand dollars in that same portfolio if you go and let's say just, you know, really being um, honest, let's say a 6% growth ratio on that, you're going to have a pretty solid starting point of our portfolio as you continue to see this compounding. And then even if you take it out another 10 years, so in 20 years in totality, it is just absolutely astronomical how much money you can get and how fast it will compound with interest, with dividends, with however you're investing it to really make a big difference. The next one is the costs have never been lower. Um, there is very low commission fees for almost everything across the board, guys. Even if you have a financial um, advisor, if you have someone who is licensed in stocks and bonds, most of the uh, commission fees are 1%. Years ago, it used to be 3%, 5%, whatever it may be. And even if you do some of your trading, like I do through M1, um, it is zero fee based trading, which is pretty cool. Um, the annual expense ratio for EFTs can vary slightly. You have to pay attention to it because most of them though are 0 0.03, 0 0.07 on an annual basis. So it is almost, 
guaranteed to, to not lose money, even if you pay a little bit of money, even if you pay a very small fee, guys, it is nothing in comparison to what it used to be. Now, number five, guys, build simplicity and tax efficiency. This is um, once upon a time, the ETFs did not exist. It was individual stocks. It was a lot of risk. It was mutual funds, which were very expensive. Now everything is super tax efficient. All of the reporting, all of the forms, if you're getting 1099s, if you're getting whatever you may be getting, guys, it is very easy to calculate the tax risk. And also tracking is incredibly easy. You don't have to wait for statements. Literally, if you have an account with a financial advisor, if you have it pretty much anywhere, you can check it all day long. You can check it every day, week, month, whatever it may be that you have your money in there. I do not advise this by any means. It can be very taxing. If you're watching it, just go down and down and down, really holding true to what you're setting. So what I do personally is I have a zero-based budget. We've talked about this before. So I have so much money that is going to my bills, to my mortgage, to the principal of my mortgage to pay that down and pay that off. The remaining with my zero-based budget is going into an investment account. So literally, I dump everything over to, to that investment account at the end of every month, meaning that I'm building up a stockpile. And as of right now, it is growing and it is growing exponentially as we continue to put more money in there, which is exactly what we want. And the last one, guys, is it has never been this easy, guys. You can buy fractional shares. Again, if you're looking at Robinhood, if you're looking at Webull, if you're looking at an absolute incredible amount of applications and ease of applications that we have, make sure you do your research. If you've looked at SVB, if you've looked at, you know, a lot of different institutions that have had financial trouble, that have went out of business, even in the crypto space, a lot of different companies, do your research, make sure that you have everything. One of the big things is with these systems is you can set it up automatically, you can set it up to withdraw on a weekly, you know, bi-weekly, daily, monthly basis, whatever it may be, it makes it super easy to invest and super easy to go ahead and invest over a long period of time with a very simple account. Now, one thing I do wanna stress guys is when you're putting money in, again, there are gonna be some variations and the way that I treat it is kind of like a 401k. If you have an employer sponsored 401k, you're putting your money in there every single paycheck, not really paying much attention to it. There is a company that is managing it. That is kind of the hands-off approach that I wanted to do as well. So when I look at the VOO, which is the Vanguard S&P 500 fund, or looking at the SCHD, which are two funds, um, again, that I do put a little bit of money into, which we'll cover in another video, but broadly speaking, ETFs, S&P 500, or looking at dividend um, stocks really makes a big difference, guys, because you spread out the risk. I am not buying you know, a bunch of Apple, a bunch of Google, a bunch of Meta, a bunch of Nike. I am spreading it among the largest 500 companies within the country, which is exactly what I wanna do, guys. Getting into other sectors, really mitigating the risk that we do have within the financial system, making sure again that you're kind of investing in a broad index would be my best way to kind of put it all right guys so that'll do it for today's video let me know in the comments what you guys think and as always thank you guys for watching